I swear to you, just when I think that they can't surprise me anymore, they manage to somehow do it. After the Democrat attack on a Republican registration drive last week, one thing I wasn't surprised about was the complete lack of media coverage. As someone pointed out on Twitter, not even the New York Times has covered this story. They just reprinted a vague AP story about a man who drove into a GOP tent because, quote, someone had to deal with Trump. No, I'm not kidding. Politico covered the story, but just take a wild guess how they reported on the story. Just take a look at this headline. Republicans vow revenge at the ballot box after volunteers nearly hit by van. Oh, so I guess a van just became self-aware and careened into the GOP tent. And then those dastardly Republicans had to get all violent and vow for revenge. Another reason I'm so annoyed that the media isn't covering this story is because we know for a fact it was a partisan attack. As chairman of the Duval County GOP, Dean Black explained, it was clearly a partisan motivated attack. The guy pulled up. I mean, it was a plainly marked event. You could not mistake what was happening. There were Trump signs everywhere. There were obviously Republicans. There was a big red tent. The guy pulls up. He gets out his cell phone. He first gives them an obscene gesture, and then he accelerates towards them as he is videotaping it. Our elderly volunteers barely got out of the way. He plows through the location, upending everything, and then he backs up and he videotaped it again. He was proud of his work. Of course he was proud. The media that he watches every day tells him that Trump and his supporters are an existential threat to this country. I've said before that if you actually believe that we're all some sort of a threat to this country, then you would take action. And this brings us to the two main reasons that I think the media is not covering it. One, it goes against the narrative of big, bad, mean Republicans and love-filled, angelic, golden god Democrats. They've ignored or otherwise downplayed violence from the left for years now to keep that narrative going. And two, they're the ones who have incited this violence. You really don't expect the media to out themselves and the Democrat party for inciting these nut jobs, do you? Yet they're always waiting for any reason to accuse their political opposition of inciting violence. To the point that they fall for obvious lies and they accuse innocent people and their desperate bid to do so. But when it comes to left wing or Democrat violence, well, they have no idea where that comes from. And in fact, they usually just blame the victim, suggesting that Trump supporters bring it on themselves. For example, according to the San Jose mayor who oversaw mob beatings of Trump supporters, it's all actually Trump's fault. I also just want to point out this CBS News video starts out with this Trump supporter punching somebody, but it's actually in defense after they've been punching him and ripping his clothes off. The media, the so called free press, the fourth estate, has literally become a meme. It also reminds me of an interview that CNN's Allison Camerata did with GOP Congressman Mo Brooks after a Bernie Sanders supporter decided to shoot up their baseball game. Do you think that? The press is the greatest enemy of the U.S. Uh, well, I'm a conservative and I'm a Republican. Certainly the news media, particularly at the national level, is a challenge for us who hold conservative beliefs. Sure. I mean, I'm just getting to, obviously, that the president tweeted out that um, Allison, especially NBC Allison. and CNN. Just, just let me just say it one second. I won't read the whole thing. But the reason that I ask you this, Congressman, um, is just because I remember last year after the tragedy there on the baseball diamond, we talked about how we were all gonna make an effort to come together and show more unity and build bridges. And I'm just wondering if you think that kind of language accomplishes that. If they were the least bit consistent, you would think that she would be asking about who incited this violence or make some kind of a statement about Democrat rhetoric tearing apart the country. But no, of course she puts the Republican on the defensive. You would think by her tone towards him that a Republican shot up a Democrat baseball game. But then again, this is CNN a place that actively promoted Antifa and the very guy who would go on to an attack on ICE facility saying that it was a concentration camp. A narrative started by Democrat AOC and then promoted by CNN, MSNBC, NBC, ABC, CBS, and the rest of the Democrat Party propaganda outlets.
And now that I'm finishing this video, I'm reading that more Bernie bros have tried to burn down a GOP headquarters. Let's see if that gets any media attention. Okay, I think my blood pressure is sufficiently high to end this video. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. Without your help, YouTube has made sure that nobody will ever see these videos. For just $1 a month, you can subscribe to me on Patreon or Subscribestar and get early access to all my videos. You can find all the links in the description and pin comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.